Jo, willkommen zurück auf silihoon.com, Lasergucknet, dem Anarchie Minecraft Vanilla Server. Mhm. Genau, und wir pressen uns mal wieder was von der Linux Foundation, also YouTube Channel der Linux Foundation, YouTube Video Titel, OSS License Compli <coughs> Compliance. For Software Developers, not for Legal Experts. Von Saturu Ueda von Sony ist der Dude. Von Sony. And uh, welcome to the most boring talk within this you know, exciting event of the end of the Linux conference. Nice. Well, maybe my talk is only one talk that is not covering about anything about the technological issue. But I'd like to cover something quite boring issue that is always this license compliance and also maybe all of some of you will be facing some of the difficult situation to make a leadership within each company to make the open source software license compliance or those kind of things and maybe you will be suffered from some of the not and not well understanding you know legal person or IP department person and I would I'd like to tell you why those kind of legal person are so so much strong-headed or hard-headed guy. So anyway, uh, my name is Ueda and I'm coming from uh, Japan and working for Sony. And I have an, uh, some of the maybe 15 years of uh, years experience uh, dealing with the open source community G through G with the uh, embedded Linux system. And maybe you know that uh, I'm one of the person who started the CE Linux Forum about uh, 15 years ago. And CE Linux Forum started this you know, embedded Linux conference. So that uh, ELC is something like, uh, I feel ELC is something like a hometown of myself. And within and Sony, I'm making a some of the uh, leadership of the open source strategy. Use and uh, some of you were aware that Sony also have a GitHub account, github.com Sony. That is a Sony's official account of the GitHub. Although the uh, number of the project within Sony's GitHub is quite limited, but uh, we are starting something quite interesting. For example, uh, we are starting to uh, make a fabrication of the uh, uh, neural uh, networking uh, deep learning uh, core engine as an uh, open source software, which is uh, Sony's original software. And also, uh, we, uh, I am now uh, taking care of the Sony's GPL source code publication site as well. And if you look into this uh, GPL uh, source code publication site, you may find a bunch of the products are already using Linux. And somebody out of Sony people make a counting how many products are, you know, uh, sitting with Linux. And no, none of the Sony company people did it, but he counted out uh, 1,200 or more. Thank you very much for the Panasonic guy. Anyway, today I'd like to uh, consider about uh, uh, first about uh, uh, each company inside uh, organization or some of the structure to deal with the open source software. And some company is making up uh, some of the core department of open source software, like a cathedral. And maybe this kind of organization they have. Here the executive uh, located here, and IPD staff, legal staff, and operating board, and many of the engineers there. Like uh, some company is saying that the 500 people, or more than 10, 10, 1,000 people, uh, working for this kind of de department and uh, that kind of department is taking care of a whole bunch of things about open source software. If you are belonging to such kind of company, maybe you will be definitely a lucky guy. And maybe uh, many of you will not be uh, attending such kind, uh, joining such kind of company, I believe, I guess. And, in many cases, within each company, you are uh, forming some sort of the in-house community to deal with open source software. Like this way, uh, here is sent in the center of the coordinator of the bazaar will be there and making some of the each volunteers are making some of the contribution each other. And it's something like a, a bazaar style. 
maybe you know that Cathedral and Bazaar is a, a quite, you know, famous article, uh, which must be uh, everybody wears to. But the problem is that uh, there's somebody still uh, have a, a quite loneliness in each company. Well, uh, no, uh, nobody support me, and uh, nobody, no manager, manager understanding me to use open source software, but I'd like to use open source software. What should I do? What is my way? What is your, who can help me? Um, is there any legal guy who can support me? No one, or oh, that kind of you know, struggling person will be still there, I believe. And maybe you will find here my footprints. Maybe I believe about uh, maybe 10 years ago or something, I or some of the uh, Sony's person uh, struggle with uh, this kind of situation so that uh, we'd, like to, we'd not like to uh, forget about the existence of those kind of people. So uh, if you are believing that you are belonging to the quite lucky guy, please ra raise your hand within your company. As, well, I know your company has such kind of things. That's great. Yeah. Another one is uh, if you are belonging to some of the in-house you know, uh, community, please raise your hand. Well, about 37%. Uh, OK. Next one is a great organization. No one, uh, no, no way. There's nothing such kind of organization existing, but I'm a lonely guy. Please raise your hand if you are a lonely guy. Maybe 26%. Uh, <laughs> and half of you uh, have not raised your, uh, raised your hand, but it's okay. So today, I'd like to focus upon those two guys. One is a lonely guy, and another is an, uh, some of the uh, person who are making a leadership within uh, each company uh, as an example of the in-house community. So if you are the, some of the uh, lonely guy who, have no, who, ha who, have, who do not have any support from any person within your uh, group or your company, uh, we'd like to consider what kind of words we can give to him. The first challenge of those kind of people will uh, tackle with those kind of two you know, misunderstandings. One misunderstanding is that OSS is unconditional, free of charge software. This misunderstanding is a really diff uh, diff uh, dangerous one, and which will lead uh, in other, uh, inappropriate use of the open source software, and which may be uh, face uh, some of the serious, you know, uh, damage uh, in uh, each company or whatever, like a litigation or whatever. And second uh, misunderstanding is that OSS is fraught with danger when it is used. Without OSS, without any OSS to, de de to de 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 my software, what should we do? Maybe those kind of software engineer will uh, fall into some, some of the condition of hell. But uh, software engineering itself must be quite interesting one. It should be quite something like a heaven. So that it is another big misunderstanding which makes us unhappy. So anyway, first, uh, I'd like to recommend those kind of people never give up to convince your manager to use the open source software. Without any uh, good understanding of the management of people, maybe the open source software used will be not so successful. So that uh, maybe you will tell something about uh, uh, increase of the, uh, the advantage of the open source software, increase of the quality, avoid reinvention of the wheel, stay at the cutting edge of the software innovation or whatever. But what I'd like to say, one thing, is that never talk about uh, OSS is free of charge software and it will reduce cost. It is really unattractive for many of the management. Reduce the cost, wow, it's okay. But we mustn't forget about it. One thing, quite important thing, that is the use of open source software. The responsibility is up to every user. The cost to use the open source software will be up to every user. So that 
it is not true that uh, open source software, use of open source software is cost free. Use of open source software is never, you know, cost free issue, but we have to bear some sort of cost to take responsibility of use of, of, use of open source software. Oops. <coughs> Here's another quite dangerous button that's here. If we, I, I put, uh, press this button, uh, screen should be uh, black out. Anyway, another thing is that we can recommend uh, those kind of people to join uh, some of the open community, like here. And maybe they will find they are not you know, lonely guy. And they can find out any of the partner out of the companies, out of the, out of the you know, uh, project, and they will be able to find out some of the good, you know, experience there, and we can exchange such kind of things. For example, ELC is one of the quite good place, and within uh, Tokyo or within Japan, we are holding uh, some of the uh, in, uh, three month interval uh, open source community embedded system guy event, which is named uh, of uh, Japan Techno Technical Jamboree, and. Another option will be that to initiate some sort of the, you know, uh, quite light, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face meeting or whatever to have some of the network of those kinds of, you know, lonely guys. And third important thing is that never give up learning the essence of the open source software and software license. Of course, if you can, uh, those kind of guys have some of the, uh, you know, good relationship with the legal guy or some of the attorneys, it must be a quite, you know, good help for them. But uh, even if uh, those kind of people do not have any good assistance from the, op uh, from the legal expert, they should be, uh, they shouldn't give up reading the open source software license. But uh, talking with the legal guy, uh, some of the, uh, you may feel that legal, talking with legal guy will uh, cause some sort of trouble, like this one. Risk, 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 risk. Oh, There's a bunch of risk. Do not use uh, open source software. And it's something tricky here. Meine PowerPoint Präsentation in der vierten Klasse, here. Leute. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> risk, 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 and fear, so that uh, you shouldn't use the open source software. That's some of the typical term of the uh, uh, legal guy, always saying, start saying. I'd like to give uh, some of the advoca advoca advocation for those kind of uh, legal per person. Uh, before talking such kind of thing, I'm not the legal expert. So that please do not make any, any, any misunderstanding. So that I'm not the person to make an official advocation. But anyway, for many cases of the software license, license itself will prepare the license. So that uh, in order to get to know the intent of the licensor, it's quite easy. Just read the license. Just re reading the license will suffice to understand what the licensor's intent is what license intent are. But I think about the open source software, for example, the Linux. Linux kernel is uh, licensed under GPL. And GPL is prepared by Free Software Foundation, as you know. But Linux community people are no you know, Free Software Foundation guy. In any cases, the legal department people start just reading the GPL license. And that is their you know, majority to read such kind of you know, a bunch of uh, wordy text. But think about it. It will not satis sat satisfy uh, to you know, get to know the intent of the uh, licensor because licensor and the person who prepared the license is different. 
so that I wonder, just simply reading the license term do not always suffice to know the intent of the licensor, I mean that open source software community. So this, this is something of the pit, uh, pit hole of the uh, Lego or some of the, those kind of guys. So my suggestion is that make uh, some of the internal co collaboration between the person of the legal person again, uh, and also the software guy who knows about uh, technology and maybe community. And then uh, remove the risk, 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 some fear and get some of the position to use the open source software. And the most important thing is to make up the internal uh, good collaboration set in between the legal expert and software community expert. But in order to reach this kind of situation, maybe those kind of lonely guys will have uh, some of the many, many, you know, difficult way so that we'd like to help them as much as, as we can. For example, uh, I would like to uh, make some of the suggestions to many of the people who are making the you know, publication of the open source software uh, by yourself. Add some of the hint to understand the open source software license. Like, uh, for example, many people say, say, many people say that uh, what is the GPL contamination? Okay, das kann also nicht weitergehen. Ich werde nicht irgendwie, keine Ahnung, von 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, was weiß ich, Diamond Pickaxes verbrennen. Das ist was, was überlegen. Aber wenn es Think about the take a case of the GPL contamination. I don't like the word of contamination. Contamination just you know, imply me that the uh, uh, GPL license software is something quite dirty or something malicious, but it is not. So that I hate to use uh, GPL contamination, but many people are accustomed to say that GPL contamination. So that I would like to uh, follow that kind of manner, but this is not my true heart. Okay, Leute, ich muss kurz hier mal pausieren, aber da ihr keiner nicht so hört, also who give the fuck. Um, mal etwas researchen. Ton hier aus. Okay. Das sieht doch okay aus, oder? Okay. Ähm, dann bauen wir doch mal das Fix. Ja, Video geht weiter. Sorry für diese kurze Unterbrechung. Das habt ihr schon gesehen. Oh, ich hatte den Ton aus, das ist natürlich ungünstig. Warte, wir spüren nochmal zu. Anyway, thinking about uh, GPL license, GPL contamination, you, we have to read the uh, section 2. For example, this is the case of GPL version 2. Read it. For most of the, you know, uh, legal department person, uh, it's quite easy. They are quite accustomed to the wordy document. The one problem is there. However, they are hardly understand the technical issue. But for the software engineer, well, no way. <laughs> it's something like a DD or some of the uh, puzzle into this kind of situation. So that uh, maybe we will be able to fi highlight some of the important keywords. But uh, uh, this kind of hi highlighting is not always uh, help. Uh, so much to the software engineer, still not. And another highlighting is here, but uh, it is also something quite insufficient to help software engineers. So that we'd like to come back to the you know, FAQ, come oh to the God, FAQ of the Free, Free Software Foundation, which is saying, 
well, there's a, uh, you know, a program with two parts, with, and one program with two parts. This is a legal question which alternate, alternately judges will be decided. So that, uh, it's something like yeah, uh, quite I'm you, uh, uh, disappointing what is here. Yeah. But look quite closely into this kind of document. If modules are designed to run li linked together in a shared address space, that almost surely means combining them into one program. And by contrast, pipes, socket, and command line arguments and com com uh, communication, uh, communication mechanism normally used uh, between two separate programs. Is it süß? If it were the person who reads this ich kind of text echt... uh, from oh. the real side, maybe no way. They cannot yeah. understand what it is saying. But uh, if it was read by the, you know, uh, software expert, it's quite easy to understand. Maybe everybody will be able to understand pipe, socket, command line argument. Oh, that's it. So that uh, if we can tell the legal department person, if it is subject to this kind of you know, mechanism, we can we can feel so so you know easy uh, to avoid the uh, you know uh, GPL license for yeah, that kind of you know internal conversation within uh, in between so the legal expert can, uh, and software expert will likely to be happen to make uh, appropriate use of the open source software from in terms of the open source software license agreement issue. And second one is the uh, uh, LGPL issue. Ah, yeah, yeah. Everybody is saying that uh, dynamic link and static link, and dynamic link is okay and static link is not okay, but in some cases, blah, 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 something like that. Especially the legal guy will tend to say such kind of thing. But if uh, the person uh, of the software out. engineer read the section 6 of LGPL version 2.1, especially A and B, then everybody, maybe every software engineer will be able to draw up this kind of picture quite instantly. Like uh, if we follow up follow to the section 6A of the LGPL version 2.1, any linking method can be applied to link some of the software library to your program. And your program will be uh, allowed to license at your choice. But to this case, uh, you have to make uh, some of the publication of the, your program as well. But it is allowed to license uh, your program at your choice. And second one is quite you know familiar one for many of the embedded software guys. That is that. Uh, section 6b, if your program here is linked to the shared library, library with some of the appropriate way to use the shared library, and there must be no argument about, uh, no argue about the dynamic linking mechanism of the Linux, well, surely uh, used for the uh, shared library to be linked. So that we have no, you know, uh, no question about this kind of thing. So to this case, this case, your program is allowed to license at your choice. And of course, this case, we are free from the uh, source code publication to your program as well. But we mustn't forget about the uh, one of the big, you know, assumption is here. Uh, that is, uh, we mustn't, you know, uh, forbid the, you know, uh, reverse engineering to your program. That kind of you know, thing is described in the section 6 of LGPL version 2.1. It must be rather easy. Whenever we can draw up this kind of picture, maybe everybody will uh, be easy to understand this kind of you know, mechanism. So I'd like to make a suggestion to many of the open source software publishers, or open source software uh, you know, community people to write something about the uh, guidance for the making the open source software license compliant from the viewpoint of the licensor of the uh, open source software, which may be quite uh, helpful, may become quite helpful for whom to use that kind of your program. And maybe 
uh, they will uh, go into uh, seek for the next phase. Our uh, next phase will be a uh, challenge to become a uh, uh, challenge to form, a, form the in-house open source software community. That is uh, getting into the bazaar style. In order to get into that kind of style, maybe it must be uh, quite important to set up the uh, collaboration and trust uh, relationship in between the legal and IT experts and uh, software engineers or some of the community uh, relationship experts. That is a uh, trust and collaboration is uh, quite important and uh, important and crucial issue. But whenever we can establish this kind of internal trust and collaborative you know, relationship together with those kind of you know, experts, maybe it is a great step ahead to formulate the internal open source software uh, use, user community or some of the user, usage you know, mutual helping uh, style. So, think about the uh, in-house bazaar style. This is the chapter two of my presentation. That is the, uh, in order to establish in-house in community, maybe we need some sort of the uh, variety of the you know, talents. One is a software engineer who wish to use open source software. That's of course. And second one is open community relationship if, expert if exist. Uh, for many of the software engineers, some of the barriers they, they are feeling to get into the open source community, but uh, if there's some person who have, uh, who have already encouraged to join the open source community, he or she will become quite, you know, a uh, powerful partner within your company. And third one is, uh, of course, legal and IT expert. And of course, in-house community leader should be ex ex exist and support from the management. I never say the support from the senior management or support from the executives, but at least some of the management should understand this kind of situation. And a communication tool will likely to have. And all participants should have at least minimum level of the understanding about open source software and license. So this is a case of Tony. Uh, Sony have already uh, set up in-house OSS committee, and I am taking a leadership of this, uh, this you know, in-house OSS committee. And about 100 members of in-house OSS users are joining this community, coming from every business unit within, uh, uh, within uh, Sony's umbrella. And uh, here's another group is here that is making an oversight of this kind of situation that is uh, named OSS Strategy Board. That is also... Seconda. Uh, led by me and some of the person like a Tim Bird or Frank Rowan or those kind of people. And that kind of you know, group is uh, supported by corporate software strategy committee. And also the professional advisory is there from legal, IT department, and uh, public relationship, and quality control department. This is Sony's internal mechanism to deal with open source software. And every uh, business unit have uh, some of the person who are making a volunteer to co collaborate within each other uh, through this kind of uh, internal open source software community. And some of the uh, person have an uh, external OSS community relationship. And some of those kind of people have already started to originate Sony original, you know, open source community, like a le deep learning uh, oh, core engine, and so maybe you will be able to see that kind of, you know, struggle at the uh, in the at the 
as Sonia's GitHub site, which I have already mentioned. I am keeping it in my mind. Never build any style of the open source software. And I have to, we have to be kind enough to the person who are kind, coming, newly coming and uh, joining the open source software user community within Sony. And that is not only the user, but also some of them are not just a user, as I will uh, mention later. And of course, we have prepared the guideline. The guideline, maybe you can guess, the every company will have an internal rule. An internal rule is saying that you must not do, you must not do, you must not set up the internet server without the, uh, uh, some of the official you know, approval or whatever. It must not, must not, must not. But my recommendation is that we'd like to start from you may use open source software. You can use the open source software. You can participate in the open source software community and minimize the max, must not. And of course, it is quite important to be reminded the open source software license compliance is quite important. Oh, I should my card. <laughs> I think this is only one must not, which you, we can see uh, within uh, Sony's internal guideline. That is, uh, in order to deal with the open source co software community, uh, or in order to use open source software, never stray from the right path or do something devious. That is only one must not. And another thing is you may use open source software, but of course uh, adding some of the small words, so long as you follow the open source software license, so long as whatever. But uh, I think the uh, Sony's internal guideline is quite permissive. That's probably Eisen, Eisen. And of, co of course, in order to set up that kind of you know, phenomenon, uh, that kind of environment, we need to level up yeah, if you know, well. employees' okay. understanding of the open source software, software to be raised. So that we have already uh, prepared some sort of the uh, open source software training course. One is e-learning, which, which can be accessed even from the Sony Music Entertainment or Sony Pictures Entertainment as well. Sony Music Entertainment, Sony Pictures Entertainment, why open source software? It is because mobile applications, the software. Maybe you know that uh, for the Android application software, iOS application software, in order to build up that kind of application software, the use of the open source software can be, uh, will become quite you know, casual. So that uh, even though those kind of people should have a minimum you know, understanding about the open source software. And of course, uh, software engineers or some of the person who, uh, you know, intensively uh, relate with software should learn something quite intensive of the open source software issue. So that we have prepared uh, one uh, training course that is uh, 370 slides and it takes nine hours to go through. And it's quite happy, but uh, more than 500 Sony software engineer already went through and they are giving me a big, you know, good reputation about it. And uh, of course, I'm making uh, some of the uh, tutor of uh, leadership of this kind of training case. And so, kurze Pause. Ich muss immer nachschauen, wie dieses Teil geht, weil ich habe halt echt natürlich keine Ahnung von der Welt. Ich brauche mal hier wieder ein Swicky Wisten. Machen wir hier unseren Hebel hin. Okay, die Frage ist, ist da irgendwo noch ein Dings involviert? Ja, natürlich. Hier. Oder? Oh! Warte mal. Fans. Ups. Hm? An der Seite. Oh, okay. 
Ich habe ich das Teil komplett falsch gebaut. Das bin ich. Ah ne, okay. Wir brauchen nur noch ein Dry Egg hier. Äh. Glaub. Das war ja klar. <lacht> Leute, what did you expect? Dass es klappt, first try? I didn't. Okay. Yeet. Es hängt natürlich da auch mit der Stein dran. Das darf natürlich auch nicht sein. Ne? Ich darf hier hinten auch keinen Stein dann dranhängen. Ne? So. Ja, es ist das Loch eh schon fertig gegraben. Also. Ja, es ist eigentlich genau gleich wie das fliegende Ding. Nur, dass es halt nicht fliegt, ne? Also es halt, klebt halt keine Flying Machine mit dran. Macht schon Sinn. Hätte ich auch aus dem Kopf bauen können. Lässt sich danach natürlich immer einfach sagen. Ja, ich mache das Video wieder gleich an, Leute. Keine Panik. dass es irgendwie vermissen will. Okay. Ähm. Um. Ja, das muss wahrscheinlich hier nicht hin. Ja, keine Ahnung, sollte so passen. Somebody gave me a good nickname. This is Where that's open source software bootcamp. But well, it must be a quite you know, interesting unique name. I like it. And of course, pull up 20 times if you make a mistake here. But that kind of you know, joke I will never say. And also, uh, one another recommendation is to use the open chain. Open chain already have a uh, one curriculum. Hey, wie Maybe, gut bin ich eigentlich, uh, Leute? Leute, wieso klappt nie irgendwas, so, was ich baue? Uh, user, uh, user, uh, user But uh, some of them uh, will be quite forgettable. Because okay. Oh. Yeah, lol. Those kind gleich. of people are something quite volunteer, not, not the expert or uh, dedicated to the software. So that they sometimes forget about the importance uh, to deal with the open source software community. Wenn ich den jetzt hier so that, uh, I will dann? never forget about the stress one thing, that is uh, never forget about the open source software TNT. community and Aha. deal, uh, have a relate with those kind of community nee, people. Richtung, eh? And of course, another thing is that I dare say, do not stay just a user of open source software. If you set, if you find some bug, you have make a bug report to the community. You fixed it. Why not making a you know uh, upstreaming to the community? That well something that duty I always say. Because when we forget about those kind of upstreaming of, the, of those kind of bugs, we sometimes face some of the tragedy. Tragedy. Hä, Leute, like, uh, was kann man denn alles uh, falsch machen im actually, Leben? Uh, experience within my company that is one series.
Oh, wartet mal. Haha, <lacht> es ist ja ganz anders. Okay, never mind. But we have found out in certain open source software, but they forget to make uh, some, some of the upstream. And later on, another big bug uh, happened to find out in the community side. So that we have Der geht eh wieder hoch, oder? Ich weiß nicht, in welcher Reihenfolge. That kind of software to the latest version. And then we found out, our found out another bug still there. And the condition becomes ah, even worse. Okay. So that we should, we are obliged to make another task to fix up such kind of things. That's something of the tragedy. So that we mustn't forget about upstream. Ah, it's a if, if it is just belonging uh. to the bad fix or some of the minor, minor, you know, feature. Yeah. And also the advantage of the uh. from viewpoint of technological strategy, that is, we can make uh, some of the, uh, uh, become uh, some of the cutting edge position of software engineering or software technological stuff. So anyway, I think the uh, Bazaar style, we have a bunch of you know, advantages uh, because everybody will have a good you know, knowledge about open source software so that the diversity we can keep so that uh, if somebody start thinking about a new businesses or some of the new challenges of the software engineering, uh, software technological issue, we can uh, make uh, adapt to that kind of you know, change. But uh, on the other hand, we have several you know, uh, minorities like uh, less possibilities to join the open source community, as I mentioned, and effort to maintain the participants' knowledge and uh, experience of open source software. I'm getting to be something quite, you know, re uh, you know uh, optimistic about it because the uh, training is making some sort of success within my company. And also, another one is a serious one, less budget. So, my final question right now is that our future is uh, going toward the cathedral or not? At this moment, I do not think the uh, way to the cathedral, uh, well, not uh, our way, but uh, we'd like to uh, make the internal oh. community yeah, as a exciting as possible and to challenge bunch of you know, challenges of ourselves to support by those kind of community. Okay, it's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you. Wow, surprising Ende. Irgendwie habe ich das Ende gerade nicht kommen sehen. If you have some question or discussion or your experience, uh, please let us know. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. I cannot uh, remember some of the exact case at this moment, but uh, some of the uh, R&D team are now start challenging that kind of thing. And quite shortly, that will be subject of my problem. And maybe uh, we will be able to solve uh, uh, just uh, reading through the uh, LGPL license uh, precisely. Oops. So, wo kriege ich jetzt Gunpowder her, Leute? Ich habe doch keine Ahnung. Well, uh, to that case, maybe we will just you know, make us the publication of the LGPL library portion, that is. Hatte ich nicht ein Looting-Schwert? Uh, am I making some of misunderstanding to your question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we will make uh, you know the LGPL library portion, uh, source code publication. That will will do. And also along with the uh, LGPL license term to the uh, to be you know uh, 
uh, shown uh, accompanied with that kind of product, as well as the, you know, uh, uh, written offer, the uh, way to the, uh, uh, obtain those kinds of source code what should be accompanied. That we are doing. So we fundamentally understand that LGPL is one of the type of the GPL. So long as we, you know, circulate or some uh, distribute the uh, binary code subject to, to the LGPL, we have to follow the way of the uh, GPL. But only one exception is the linking. And linked to the linked software, we have we got another, you know, uh, exception because of that kind of terms. So. Maybe we can uh, remember the nature of LGPL, library GPL. And library GPL means that the uh, Free Software Foundation make an exception uh, thinking about the uh, you know, case of the L uh, LG uh, library's special case. So that, uh, that will be quite easy to be understand. Okay, anybody here? Okay, here we go. Überlebe ich einen Sprung da runter? Nicht ohne Helm, ne? Hast du meinen Helm, Jungs? Boah, sind das viele. Wie schlau denkt ihr, ist es, die anzugreifen? I suggest you to talk to the uh, you know legal expert in this case. <laughs> but uh, maybe any kind of you know a way that 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 he does is a table or some, whatever. So long as that is an appropriate way to distribute the source, source code for the person of the expert of the software engineer, that will become an appropriate one, I believe. Sorry, but I cannot say some of the decisive decisive thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mm. Sure, 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 sure. You have to keep that kind of you know, service at least three years. That is written in the GPL. Go ahead. So, wo bin ich jetzt ein Creeper, Leute? Wo finde ich jetzt ein Creeper? Ich sollte mir wahrscheinlich mal Schuhe dazu machen. Hm. Of course, we know that that kind is quite controversial, and somebody will say something. But if it were the GPL, I am reading every method of the linking, or for some of the GPL contamination. So that, to that case, if that kind of software library is licensed on GPL, not LGPL, to that case, every software should be obliged to follow the you know, uh, obligation of the uh, GPL, like uh, you know, source code publication or whatever. So that's what I am thinking. Mm. It's just not so ideal. Auch wenn ich gern mal viel Are you asking me about uh, Sony internal guide drawing or some other? Uh, yeah, we have, we have such kind of things. Mm. And I personally have a, one of the, uh, you know, challenge uh, to make those kind of, you know, things in a sub, some of the public space. And ah, I am now communicating with, with a book publisher. Uh, if it is possible to make that kind of thing available uh, in a 
in an open place. But sorry, starting from the Japanese. <laughs> Und Looting 2, jetzt geht's mm -hmm. los. Um, I think the Debian case is something of the best practice. And uh, many of the open source community people should follow. Like that kind of you know, guidance, the users should be quite uh, feeling quite at ease and will expand the case of the user. The user. No, 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 Ja, Leute, ähm, tja, auch wenn jetzt Nacht ist und das natürlich sehr praktisch ist, ist die Folge natürlich vorbei, weil das Video vorbei ist. Und oh mein Gott, naja, vielleicht ist es doch gut, mal hier, boah, Nacht ist schon Gift. Ah, komm, den einen Kühlfall kriegen wir noch. Oder auch nicht, weil ich jetzt gerade echt in den Kursetrieb bin. Aber, ihr wisst natürlich, äh, hier, der Server ist gratis erreichbar mit einer hohen Uptime. Und Stabilität. Ähm, ich werde die Ressourcen anpassen, je nachdem, was hier gebraucht wird. Ähm und das Video, was wir geschaut haben, ist von der Linux Foundation. Ähm oh, ich habe echt Bock, noch so einen Creeper zu bekommen. Ja, komm schon, komm schon, komm schon. Ähm, genau, Link zum Video ist in der Beschreibung. L Server IP und alternative Server Domain ist auch in der Beschreibung. Ähm, falls ich die IP-Adresse ändern sollte, werde ich ein Update-Video machen. Also schaut mal auf dem Kanal, ob ein neues Video draußen ist. Da wird immer die aktuellste IP hier angeworben, denn der Server wird sehr, sehr, sehr wahrscheinlich noch einige Jahre online bleiben. Und, ähm, Genau. Was in einigen Jahren passieren kann, ist, dass sich natürlich eventuell die IP ändert und irgendwie, ey, das wird nichts mehr mit dem Creeper hier, Leute, okay? Also, ähm, ja, ihr wisst Bescheid, ne? Das war's dann für diese Episode und wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge dieser Dauerwerbesendung wieder. Da ist ein Creeper. Ja, okay, komm, komm, einer geht noch, einer, einer, einer geht noch. Okay. Leute, das ist ja frustrierend hier. Okay, ich geb's, ich geb's auf. Ähm, das, das war's dann komplett an der Stelle. Oh Gott! Das war's dann komplett an der Stelle. <lacht>